Hello and welcome to this very special episode. This is not a build video, it's a celebration of sorts. It's not that I reached a specific number of subscribers or views or anything, it's that my latest video was my 30th. And to top that, it's about two years ago since I made my first build video. And to commemorate the occasion, I will do something I should have done a long time ago. Let's make a shop tour. I did a small, short uh, 60 second shop tour back in August 2019, but a lot of things have happened since then. The main thing is that we had to install a radon sucker to get the ground radiation levels down in the basement. It's quite noisy and it takes up a lot of space, but it has reduced the values from 570 becquerels down to 30. So that's pretty nice. Anyhow, let's start with this one. My mobile welding table. It's an old work car where I have tiled at the top as a heat protector. And if you come over here, I'll show you uh, the rest of it. You're gonna make me come over there and get you, aren't you? <sighs> Children. I made this protection screen both to keep the dust and the kids out, but also it can be used as a visual inhibitor when I'm doing my welding outside, because there's a public road going just outside the doors. Here we have all my metal working tools. My stick welder, the welding mask, the angle grinder, with all the discs and yeah, everything metal. And next to it we have the trusted Super Jaws readily available. There's also a lot of boxes of random junk, because this is actively a part of our house, so, I mean, junk accumulates in the cellar. It's just how it is. If we move up, behind the welding table is where I keep all my medium-sized cheap goods. And on these shelves, we have the wood storage. Long form, medium, short, and scraps. And here we have the metal pieces, small scraps, medium, and the long form is up there by the wood. Let's go outside. This is where I do most of my power cutting and sanding, because dust is best kept outside. I don't know if you can tell, but the ground is rather sloped here, so it's perfect for the super jaws with three legs to get a somewhat even surface, both as a holder of things and as an extra work surface. And right behind you is the public road I was talking about, but let's not go into that. In fact, let's go back inside. And on this side we have all the power tools. It's a compressor, the micro saw, and all the power hand tools. I don't have a dedicated mitre station because I'm not a dedicated woodworker. And as I said, I do all my cutting outside. I won't go into any detail about the power hand tools because then we'll be just be here all day and that's not how we do stuff around here. Up top we have the infamous Raven sucker and also the small part storage by Lots and bolts, washers, that kind of things. I really should label these. Moving on, from the hand tools we seamlessly transition to the bandsaw and its dust collector. Hang on, I hear you say. Didn't you say that you did all your power cutting outside and this bandsaw is not mobile? Yes, that's true. Uh, historically, I have done all my power cutting outside, but this bandsaw is the latest addition to the workshop. My mom and dad surprised me with it on my 40th birthday earlier this year. So, historically, the previous statement still stands. Above it, we have all my hand saws and spray paint and oils and all that kind of things that you want to keep out of reach from children. Down here, we have drawers. 
lots of drawers. Not 40, but still. Here you will find most anything you might need that's good to have in a drawer. Like tape, sandpaper, glue, screwdrivers, electrical outlets, most anything you need. And these drawers are labeled because if you have a closed front drawer, there really should be a label on it. So you have some kind of indication what's inside. Otherwise, who knows, you might have an empty drawer where you can put stuff. Up top, we have the drill section. Here is my crusted pillar drill with its dedicated pair of safety glasses. So I never have an excuse to cheat. Always protect your eyes. Beside it, we have the handheld drill and bit driver with spare batteries and battery chargers. Some special bits and for clamps readily available. And some more racker cases with all my wood screws. And up here we have the shop stereo because you gotta have some sweet tunes. Beside the drill press we have my primary work table, famous from a lot of my build videos. Below it you can barely make out the stand for the microsaw and above it we have this cupboard that's mostly my soldering iron, the random screw bucket and a lot of plastic containers because you basically get can't have enough. Next to the work table we have the tool wall with all the most used tools and since the picture says more than a thousand words just look at it while I close the door to the laundry room. Here we have Beatrix, my trusted safety inspector with safety tie and all. Those shelves behind her uh, holds all the ear and eye protection as well as a lot of cables and transformers and that kind of stuff. And behind the shelf and all those, these clothes are the large form sheet code storage. Before we walk through the doors to the clean part of the workshop, let's stay a moment at this secondary work table. Well, it's not a work table per se, it's more a place where you're allowed to put stuff on so that the primary work table can be kept clean. Right now, it's mostly uh, projects in progress, as well as the tiles for the kitchen backsplash. Above, there are some shelves for long time projects in progress storage. And below it, we have the small size sheet goods storage. Now we're entering the clean park of the workshop, or as it also is known, my home office. This is where I spend my day job hours during the pandemic, but just beside it we have the fabric storage, thread, yarn, leather, and the sewing machine. And a nice clean surface to use them on. And with this we conclude the shop tour. For all of you who have stayed on this long, I can honestly say that the shop isn't this clean on most days. It's just that I just got it back into working condition since the radon sucker installation and I basically haven't had time to make a mess yet. But I won't keep you any longer. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.